Hi, good morning guys. So great to be back here. Pastor Trevor Organ here uh, from East Heart Ministries. We're in Belleville. And I'm so grateful to be able to minister to you, to connect with you once, once again this morning on uh, Facebook. And uh, lately we've got some of my family and everyone that's in uh, Pretoria and Boxburg and so on. Uh, and Feld, uh, um, St. Helena Bay, wherever, listening as well, and, and a lot of friends, and so on. So it's so great to be able to minister through uh, Facebook as well. And you know, I really want to speak to you this morning. We're looking at the 10 roles of the Holy Spirit. And what I want to discuss with you this morning, uh, how the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom and revelation and power, um, uh, because I really sense that the, the the church has really shifted back to the work of the Holy Spirit, the working of the Holy Spirit. You know, for a long time, um, the church has been focused on many things and teaching and, and so on. But the church is coming back to uh, the working of the Holy Spirit. And, and I believe that the Holy Spirit has been the most valuable thing that that Jesus has left for us in John chapter 24 and 26 he talks about that that he is going to the father and that he will leave us the holy spirit the comfort the helper that we looked at uh, in the first lessons and so on and that the holy spirit is the most valuable uh, person or entity or thing that God has left us and i don't want to say a thing but uh, he's a person that Jesus has left us, he's left, left us part of himself, uh, the character and the personality of God, the, the, the very nature of God, he left inside of us to dwell in us as believers and we need to realize what we have received. We need to come to a place of understanding the true power and anointing and what we have received from God. But before we start this morning, let's just pray. And I believe that God's going to minister to you this morning and open your heart and open your mind right now. Father, we just come to you this morning in Jesus' name. Lord, and I pray for every person that is listening to this message online this morning. Father, I pray that the, the, the eyes of their hearts will be flooded with light this morning to understand what you have called us to and what you have given us in the form and by the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And Lord, I pray that you will come and just reveal Him this morning. Holy Spirit, come and reveal yourself this morning. And we will understand the greatness we have in you. And we worship you, we praise you, we exalt you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, so many times we hear about the Holy Spirit, we talk about the Holy Spirit. As believers, we, we, we uh, are being prayed for to be filled with the Holy Spirit and all these things. But I don't think we always realize how important He is. You know, it's, it's easy to talk about it, but sometimes to really talk about it and to really, this is a Silla moment. It's where the Bible says, stop and think. And again, this morning, we need to stop and think. What has God really given us? When he gave us the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is such a powerful force and there's so many things we can call the Holy Spirit but besides that he's a person he's a powerful force he is the very power of God he is the very presence of God he is the very mind of God he is everything that is God uh, he is that in the spirit inside of you as a believer and if you can grasp this this morning if you can understand this, this will change your prayer life. This will change the way you look at circumstances. This will change the way you, you approach decision making. This will change the way uh, 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 that uh, you fear things and all these things, realizing that God is inside of you. Let's just look at the word this morning. So we're looking at number four this morning, point number four. The Holy Spirit is a source of revelation, wisdom, and power. And we're going to look at that. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 to 11. Now listen to what the word says. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 to 11. These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. 
The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except for their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. I'm just going to read to you what I've written down here. And then we're just going to discuss this scripture for a few minutes. So, God gives His followers the Holy Spirit so that we may know Him better. First of all, so that we can know Him better. Because it says there that, uh, and we're going to look at that, so that we can know Him better. Since the Holy Spirit is God's Spirit, it is God's Spirit. That's what you need to realize. It knows the thoughts of God. The Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of God. Just think for a moment. He knows the thoughts of God. What God thinks, the Holy Spirit knows. What He has in His heart, the Holy Spirit knows. What is, what is making Him tick, what makes Him excited, what makes Him sad, the Holy Spirit knows. Realize that He knows the heart of God. It's so powerful. The Holy Spirit opens believers' eyes to the hope of salvation and the inheritance they have in Christ. Jesus knew that His disciples would need the power to carry out their mission to be witnesses in the, to the entire world. So we need the Holy Spirit for us to be effective witnesses. We need the Holy Spirit to empower us. And we need the Holy Spirit to open our eyes that we will understand the hope of our salvation. You know that we are saved. The hope of that salvation that you are saved, you're a child of God. And especially in a time like this where we're in the COVID-19 pandemic, there are so many people that are worried about their lives. This week I was working, uh, spraying a, a, a vehicle and I had a young man uh, working with me. And he came to the realization, he was a, he was a rough kind of boy. Uh, they had problems with him in school and all kinds of stuff. You know, and, 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 and this week while we were working, he said to me, Uncle Trevor, you know that the thing that bothers me, and uh, he always wants to, he wants war and he wants all these things. And he said to me, Uncle Trevor, the thing that worries me and that hit home in my heart was if I die, because one day we were talking, he was talking about f war and fighting and all these kinds of things here in South Africa. And I said to him, but you might be shot in the very first battle and then you don't have a part in this war. And he came back and he said to me, Uncle Trevor, if I die, that is what bothers me. Will I be in heaven? Will I be open my eyes in heaven? Will I be, will I be going to heaven? You know, and he realized that he needs to give his life. He needs to change his life. You know, and that's what I'm saying this morning. If we can realize the hope we have in Jesus and in uh, this, uh, get a revelation of what the hope we have in this calling. It's such a powerful thing. Now let's look at the scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10 to 11. These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. So first of all, God reveals things to us by His Spirit. He reveals, he, the Holy Spirit is the only one that can bring your mind up to speed on the supernatural, the things that God is doing in the, in, 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 in the Spirit. You know, so many times we are so bound to our natural lives that we never realize that we are serving a supernatural God. That He is beyond man's comp comprehension. He's beyond your ideas. He's beyond your plans. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think or imagine. So uh, uh, God is just bigger than you. And the Bible says here, these are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. So He needs to reveal Himself, His plans, His will, by His Spirit. He says, the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. So we realize that the Holy Spirit, He searches all things. He searches your heart. He searches every situation. You know, everything you get involved in, He searches everything. And He searches the heart of God concerning that thing. He searches the heart of God. He knows the heart of God in every situation. We don't know everything and we don't know why things sometimes happen. But the Holy Spirit searches all those things. He knows all those things. So he says, 
Uh, the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, for who knows a person's thoughts except for his own spirit? Who knows your thoughts? Who knows what's really going on in your heart except your own spirit, except your own... Uh, 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 you, you are the only one that really knows what's going on. You are the only one that knows why you are sad. You're the only one that knows your fears. You are the only one that knows your strengths. And sometimes you have strengths that no one else knows about, but you never have the opportunity to show it. Or you never get to the place of really stepping into who you really are. How many of you sometimes feel like that? You know, you know you've got so much potential, especially as a young person this morning. I'm thinking of young people. You, you know you can do so much more, but you never get the opportunity or people don't believe in you or you're too shy to show it, but you know when you get the opportunity or when the opportunity is presented, you will be able to it. You to do it. You know, you know what is in your heart. You know. And the Bible says only a man's spirit inside of him knows his heart. He says in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. No one knows the thoughts of God except. No one knows the thoughts of God except. We don't know the thoughts of God. No one knows the thoughts of God except the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is such an important person, such an important thing that we need in our lives for us to know the hearts of God, to know the heart of God, to understand the heart of God, to know His thoughts and His feelings. We need the Holy Spirit for that. Isn't that powerful? And that is what Jesus left us. He left us the Spirit of God that knows. Just think of that. You're, you are the only one that knows what's going on in your heart. And the Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. He's the only one that knows what's going on in God's heart. But God left you that spirit to dwell inside of you that knows the heart of God so that you can live and express the heart of God. So you have a one-way direct connection with God. It's like a husband and wife. The Bible says when they get married, the, 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 they must leave their parents and cleave to one another. You know, they must cleave to one another. They must, they must form a bond that makes them one in flesh. And that is what happens when we receive the Holy Spirit. We become one with God. You are like, uh, you, you become one with God. I know the Apple, I, I don't know if some of the other, your tablet, when you have your phone and your, and your Apple uh, uh, tablet or whatever, they synchronize with one another. So whatever you do on the phone happens on the tablet. And whatever you do on the tablet goes to the phone. So they connect it with one another. And in the same way, if you can understand it that way, that is the same way we are connected with God. As soon as God does something in the heavens or He thinks something, He's got a plan for something, He wants to do something, it, it comes up in your spirit immediately. It's downloaded in your spirit. And suddenly we have this prophetic kind of feeling that we need to talk about this, we need to do this, we need to go and phone that one, we need to go and see that one. It's, the heart of God is immediately revealed. And that is how you sometimes hear the God, voice of God, you hear the Spirit of God, and you know the things of God. You know, so it's important that we need this. And I, I believe that as I'm saying this, many of you are saying, yes, that is what I need. You know, and I know in decision making in times of trouble, we need to be download directly from God. We can't just listen to people all the time. And, it, and today we hear yeah, there are so many lies, so many things happening. So we can't just listen to people all the time. We need to get to a place where we start hearing from the Lord. And I believe that that is the time that we as the church are entering in now. I believe that that has been downloaded to, to me from God and I know it's been downloaded to many people and many pastors and many ministers because I've seen over the last few months, everyone is talking about the Holy Spirit and, and the guiding of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit and the healings and the miracles and all these things. And, and, and we were listening to uh, Pastor Maldonado last night about the supernatural, you know. 
uh, it, the church is coming back to those things. It's like it's been downloaded to the church everywhere. It's like the church is being activated to rise up and to start doing the will and the plan of God. So it's so important that we realize this. So let's just continue. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he says, Jesus told his disciples, but you will receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the very ends of the earth. So we realize in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says you will receive power. So we have that power that we receive from the Holy Spirit. We say that He gives us wisdom, revelation, and power. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, I skipped a verse. Uh, uh, but let's just do that as well. So he, he is the one that gives you the power. He's empowering you. Not, not just giving you the wisdom and revelation and understanding that we're going to look at now. But He gives you the ability and the power. You download it from God. And now you can operate in the will and in the plan and with the power of God to heal the sick uh, cast out demons to to be able to operate in the gifts of the spirit words of wisdom and knowledge and faith and and all these kinds of things so let's just look in ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 20 ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 20 now the bible says for i always pray and this is paul now praying he's praying for the believers in ephesus so he says for I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Paul is praying for the church. And this is my prayer to this, this morning for you, Lord, that you will give your church a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Father, I pray that you will give them, grant them a spirit of wisdom and revelation. I think that is something we need in this time like never before. So he says, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. The Amplified says, of insight into mysteries and secrets. You see, the Holy Spirit gives you insight into mysteries and secrets. When you pray in the Spirit, we believe in praying in tongues. We believe that you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, uh, um, like we said in, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, they, must, they had to go and wait in Jerusalem until they receive power. And when you receive power, you can become, a, uh, 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 you have the ability and the efficiency and the might when the Holy Spirit comes on you, like we said, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. It gives you the might and the power to be a witness with signs and wonders following and, 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 and confirming the word of God. So it's important. Here yeah, where Paul says, I pray that the Lord will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets. When you have the Holy Spirit, we, we believe that when you pray in tongues, you pray secrets. You pray the perfect will of God. And I don't have time to go into all those scriptures, but we pray the perfect will of God. We pray secrets. We pray things concerning the future that has not happened yet and that we don't even know about. But we pray those secrets by the Spirit. And, and when we pray it, 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 it starts manifesting and it starts happening. And we, we kind of pray against the works of the enemy and we pray stuff that the enemy cannot hear because we pray it in a, in a heavenly language, an unknown tongue, which the enemy doesn't understand. So you pray secrets, you pray the divine will of God, the perfect will of God, and the enemy, he, he doesn't know what you're praying. And you pray those things into being by the Spirit and sometimes you're not even knowing yourself. What you are, what you are saying. So the Bible says here, um, the spirit of revelation and wisdom, insight into mysteries and secrets, in the deep and intimate knowledge of Him. So He teaches you these things of the deep and intimate knowledge of God. Wow! So that you can understand God in a deeper way. That's why the, the Holy Spirit is so important. You know, we need Him to build our relationship with God because the Holy Spirit is the only one that can teach you and help you to understand God 
And when you understand God, it's like your relationship with Him grows stronger. When you read the Word, when you study the Word, your relationship in that Word becomes, uh, through the Word with God, becomes stronger because you start praying His kind of language. You start praying what, what His desire is. You start praying what, what He longs for. You know, uh, you're not just praying the things that you want. So it's important that we need that we have the Holy Spirit. So here we see, he says, deep and intimate knowledge of him. Now listen to verse 18, Ephesians 1 verse 18. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. Listen to Paul's prayer. He says, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. He's not talking about your eyes. He says the eyes of your heart. He means understanding that you will receive understanding such that your heart, the eyes of your heart will be flooded with light, that the eyes of your heart will be flooded with understanding and wisdom to understand the things of God, to understand his purpose and his plan and his will. Let's just look at it, verse 18, he says, By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. Very important point. He says, For you that your heart will be flooded with light, understanding and light, so that you can understand the hope to which he has called you. You know, I believe that each one of us are called for the purpose of God. We have different callings and different areas where God wants to use us, but we all called for the purpose of God. And I think so many times the church is running around, we're running here and we're doing this and we're doing that, and we try to do all kinds of things. But are we really following the purpose of God? What is God's purpose? Uh, I think Rick Warren or someone wrote a book a while ago, The Purpose Driven Church. You know, and that we as believers, we need to find the purpose of God. You need to find the purpose for your life. Why has God, uh, why are you born? Why has God placed you on earth? What is your talent? What is your gifting? And in that searching, going to the church and start growing in God, eventually uh, the, Paul is praying here that your heart will be flooded to understand the purpose to which he has called you. And I believe for every believer, for you, when you realize what you are called for, realize what God wants to do with your life, then your life makes sense. Suddenly, everything you do, you can plan around that purpose. You see, because if you plan your life around the purpose of God for your life, your life will be successful. So many times we want to plan God around our purposes and our plans and what we want and what we desire. But we need to find God's purpose and then plan our lives around His purpose. And when we start doing that, then all our plans will succeed. Then favor will come upon your life. The blessing will come upon your life. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life when you start finding His purpose. And this is what Paul says. He says that the eyes of your heart may be flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. He set apart once. He talks about God having inheritance in the saints. God has got an inheritance through us. He's got an inheritance in the saints. Maybe I'm translating this wrong, but for me... It says that we are the ones that are actually bringing God's inheritance. When Jesus died on that cross and He gave His life, He paid the price for the sin of the world and He, he, he sacrificed His life and He became the final sacrifice upon the cross for the sins of the world and the sins of the world was forgiven. Suddenly the relationship between man and God opened up again. Where man was separated from God, that relationship was restored. He went to heaven, he left his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to, to indwell us as believers, to, to carry the very presence of God again. And as we carry his presence, we become like him. And as we carry his presence, we are moving into that purpose of God. And his purpose is to bring the whole world 
back to Him, to turn every heart of man back to God, to bring people to salvation, to bring them into a place of understanding and knowing God, into a relationship with God, not just uh, getting saved, but bringing them into a relationship with God. When they, when they start uh, uh, developing that relationship with God, that is the purpose to which He has called us. And we are the ones, that is His inheritance. That is what Jesus paid for. That is what Jesus died for. That is His inheritance is the earth. We, we belong to Him. The Bible says all of creation are waiting in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. The earth is waiting for us to be revealed. The earth is waiting for the church to rise up in such power and authority so that the world will know and will turn to God like never before. I believe we're going to see the greatest revivals in the earth before Jesus returns. And the ones that are just waiting for Him to come and to take us out of all these problems, I've got a big surprise for them. It's better that they go and just be with Him. But for us that are here, we want to fulfill that purpose and bring that inheritance that belongs to Him into His hands, in, unto our God. Bring it and present it to Him. That is our purpose to bring that inheritance to him you know uh, just follow me in this it says now um, and that is his glorious inheritance in the saints now Ephesians 1 verse 19 and so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power and uh, in and for us who believe Paul is praying here and he says so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power. Wow. So the Holy Spirit is the one, Paul is praying here and he says that it will be revealed to us that we can understand his immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness, the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe. Let me tell you, there is so much power available. The Bible actually says it's immeasurable. You cannot measure that power that is available. It is unlimited. We cannot limit the power of God. I want to tell you that the Bible says all things are possible for them who believe. Now what is all? All is all. I looked in the Greek and I looked everywhere. All means all. All things are possible for them who believe. And the Bible says that God's fullness is immeasurable. In other words, you can't measure it. It is unlimited, says the Amplified. It is surpassing greatness. The surpassing greatness. It's so great. It surpasses greatness. <laughs> you know, and if you realize this, take a moment and just grasp this. This is how big the power, how mighty the power, how strong the power of God is for the believers. We have a power that words cannot describe. That is why Jesus said that you will, you will uh, say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Do you understand that kind of power? That's why we would lay our hands on a sick person and they will recover. It is immeasurable. You cannot say it cannot happen. You can't say that's not going to happen. It is immeasurable. It can't be stopped. You, you can't. There's nothing about God that you say. Can't, okay, this week I had people coming to me and saying, Trevor, but what if this? What if this? Then I just said, I don't know. With God, all things are possible. You know, you can't say this or that or you don't know about this. With God, all things are possible. He can use anybody. He can do anything he wants to because he's not bound to the natural. He is a supernatural God. He is above the natural. He's super abundantly above all. That is the God we serve. And if we can understand it, he says the, the, that what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe. Wow. It is in and for us who believe. That power, God's power is in and for us. So in other words, God has got a purpose for your life. And has, He has given you a power that cannot be measured by any person, any man, anything. Uh, it surpasses all things. 
and it is in you and it is for you who believe. Wow. So this makes it that nothing is impossible for them that believe. So the Bible says, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, he demonstrated his power. Uh, verse 20, which he exerted. That exerted uh, it actually means the effort he put into that. That which he exerted, making an effort, I wrote it in brackets here, in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. That exerted means the trouble he went through, the effort he made by raising up his son. First of all, by sending his son, for taking his son and making him into a baby and, and a seed form entering a woman and then being birthed into the earth. He had to go through so much effort to get that thing done, to have his son in the earth and let Jesus walk through the earth for 33 years without sin, not breaking any law, uh, fulfilling every law, living a perfect sinless life. And let me tell you on that note, that is where we are heading as his children. God wants us to get into a place where we will walk in the perfect character of God. We, we will walk. That is that is what I'm saying about immeasurable. If you are saying, yeah, but I'm not holy. I'm not so great. Uh, someone said to me today, I don't follow the Lord, you know, the way you do uh, on the level that you do. Let me tell you, I'm still in the low level because I believe that God wants us to move into a higher level of holiness. A higher level of carriers of His presence. A higher level of, of a being a person in the earth that carries His anointing, carries His presence. Let me tell you, there is so much. It's immeasurable. So He says in verse 20, which He exerted, He made the effort to put that, to, to, to bring Jesus into the earth, to have Him live that sinful life, have Him live in holiness, have Him live in the gifts of the Spirit, the anointing. He knew what was going on in the hearts of man. He could pray for a sick person and they could help well. He could uh, walk on the water. He, he could calm a storm. Let me tell you, Jesus did so many things that we are supposed to be able to do. And that is why uh, Paul prays that our hearts will be flooded with light so that we can come to an understanding of the purpose that God has through us. Wow, just think of that. So he says, he exerted making an effort in Christ when he raised him from the dead. He seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So God made that effort to send His Son, to have Him die on the cross, to raise Him back up to life again. He made that effort so that we don't have to die, so that we don't have to live a life in fear of death. Because we know, like Paul says, to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. So we not what we are doing now is just the start of our lives. But when we die, immediately we carry on to the next life being with God and living a full life, it continues forever because we are immortal already. You are not going to die. Uh, maybe in the earth you'll die, but you're not going to, your spirit will live forever. You will always know what you've done in the earth today. When you're in heaven one day, you can still remember what you're doing today. So whatever you're doing today, think of that. You're always going to be in heaven thinking, why didn't I rather do that? Why didn't I rather spend time with God? Why didn't I rather win souls? Why didn't I rather pray for the sick? Why didn't I rather do that instead of this that I'm doing? Uh, maybe uh, stealing and killing and uh, cheating and, 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 and all these kinds of things. And then you get saved right at the very end and you go to heaven. And then you look back on your life and you say, wow, I missed all of that. I missed all of what God has for me. I need to carry on. But I just want you to realize this. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 15. Um, and Paul prayed that he said in the previous verse in Ephesians. He said, Lord, I pray that the eyes of their hearts may be flooded with light. That they will come to an understanding, you know. But in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 15, he's, pray, he's talking to, about the, the, to the Corinthian church. And Paul is talking about a spiritual man. You know, I believe that we need to come into the fullness 
of the spiritual man that we should be. That you are a spiritual man, you are a spiritual woman, you are a spiritual being, you're a spiritual young man, a young lady. Let me tell you that you are a spiritual being. He says, but the spiritual man tries all things. He examines, investigates, inquires into questions and discerns all things. He's talking about a spiritual man. You know, and I believe that we need to raise our level of I don't want to say spirituality, but we need to raise our level of character uh, and carrying the character of God. And here Paul is explaining what a spiritual man can do and what he looks like. Listen to this. He says, but a spiritual man tries all things. In other words, you test all things. He examines, investigates, it, inquires into. He asks the right questions. He, 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 he sees the right things. He investigates it. He questions and discerns all things. So a spiritual man has got a mind that can see everything that's happening around him. He understands the heart. He can see the hearts of people. He can see their feelings. He can t pick up their emotions. He can examine them. He can examine things. He can look into everything whenever people come. He kind of has a spiritual idea. But this is, this is what this guy is planning. This is what he picks up the whole situation. This is what he's actually saying here. He, he, he investigates, inquires into questions and discerns all things. Yet is himself to be put on trial and judged by no one. He can read the meaning of everything. That is a spiritual man. And when you look back, you'll see that is what the, Holy, the description of the Holy Spirit. He says the spiritual man, um, uh, he, 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 he himself can be put under trial and judgment by no one. So in other words, uh, you live a life that is above reproach. I'm not there yet, but I'm going to get there. And that is what our goals should be. That is what our purpose should be. Lord, I want to be above reproach. This is what he says a spiritual man looks like. He cannot be judged by no one. He can read the meaning of everything. In other words, he can look at everything and understand everything in the right sense. But no one can properly discern or appraise or get an insight into him. Wow. You can see everything as a spiritual man. But people can't really place you. You know, it's like you just don't fit into any box that they've got. It's, they can't place you. They can't really understand you. It's like when they think this, you do that. And we see that in the life of Jesus. When the woman comes in with the alabaster jar and she breaks it, everyone's thinking, that is very precious. He, he, she shouldn't have done that. And, but Jesus comes and he gives them a totally different answer. I've been in your house all night. You haven't given me water to wash my feet. You haven't given me oil. Nothing. This woman, since she came in here, She's, she's done this, and, and, and she will re be remembered always. And, 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 and you know, Jesus just has the opposite reaction. When Zacchaeus is sitting in a tree, nobody likes him, he's a tax collector. Jesus comes in there, and he sees him, and he says, come down from there. He, did, he does the opposite of what everybody wants. He does what nobody expects. The man sitting with the uh, Zacchaeus sitting at the, or, or the man sitting at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus comes there. They expect him to put him in the water or to help him to get into the water. But Jesus comes and says, "Get up, take take up your mat and walk." You know, he does the opposite. Uh, he comes to Peter and the, the disciples on the water. He walks to them on the water. I mean, he does what no one else does. That is a spiritual man. And I want to encourage you with this word tonight. Listen to what he says. No one can really judge him. When I was in Africa, uh, I went and I, I at the time where I spent uh, some, I, I wanted to build overlanders to take people on tours into Africa, like a truck with a bus thing on the back. And then you take them on an overland tour. But I wanted to do that in a mission, mission um, outreach sense. And that's why I came back and I started with the trucks to build one. And then I just got into the transport and never got out. But um, uh, while I was there, I spoke to this one guy and he said to me, he said to me, Trevor, you know, um, they train us in our training that you mustn't be the same every day. One morning you must get up and you must be friendly and you help everyone and you cook and you do stuff. 
The next morning you must get up and you must just be totally different. Just be rude and kind of whatever, you know. And, and, and so your mood mustn't be the same every day because then everyone kind of just floats. But they must never know what to expect from you because when they don't know what to expect from you, it binds them together. And in that setting like Africa and places where you are like that, if you say something, they must respond. You know, when people grow too accustomed and too uh, happy-go-lucky and so on, when something happens and you speak, then they don't respond. But when you, when you are like that, it keeps their attention on you all the time to make sure that they are in step. They are doing the right thing. They don't want to do something wrong. Uh, you know, so it just keeps them on their toes. And, and I'm not saying that we should be like that. But in a sense, I see this like a spiritual man. You cannot be judged by anyone. No one really knows what's going on in, uh, in the spiritual man. The Bible says that um, I can't remember the scripture exactly now, but it says something like um, uh, no one knows where the, spur the, 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 the wind blows wherever it wants to. No one knows where it comes from and no one knows where it's going. And that is how a spiritual man is, you know, that we, we you like the wind. Nobody, no one can really place you, but you always do the right thing. You know, when everyone else is uh, teasing someone, you stand up for them. When everyone else is breaking someone down, you lift them up. You know, you always do the right thing. You don't do things the world, the way the world does. It's powerful. Now listen to this. The Bible says uh, um, everything but no one can properly discern or appraise or get an insight into him. And then verse 16. For who has known and understood the mind, the counsels and the purposes of the Lord? He asks this question. He says who understands the mind and the counsels and the purposes of the Lord? We said right in the beginning. No one knows the heart of a man except the spirit of a man. In the same way, no one knows the heart of God except for his own spirit, for the spirit of God. Now he comes with the same thing. He says, uh, for who has known and understood the mind, the counsels and the purposes of the Lord, so as to guide and instruct him. No one knows the counsels and the purposes of the Lord to instruct him. And gave him knowledge, uh, and give him knowledge. So we can't give God knowledge. We can't tell him anything. He says, but we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and purposes of his heart. Listen to this statement. He says, but we have the mind of Christ. Wow. This is one of the most powerful verses in the Bible. I actually built my life and my ministry around this. Because he says, but we have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you become a child of God and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have the mind of Christ. He says, who can know the thoughts of God and the purposes of his heart? We can know it because we have his Spirit. Except for his Spirit inside of him, we have his Spirit inside of us. But we have the mind of Christ, says the Bible. The Messiah and do hold the Bible says we do hold the thoughts the feelings and the purposes of his heart let me tell you that you have in your hands the thoughts the feelings and the purposes of his heart you know you can know the thoughts of God you can know the feelings of God think about that the feelings of God you can feel what God feels the purposes of God, the thoughts, the feelings and the purposes of God. You can know what God wants to do in every situation. What is the purpose for this situation? What is the purpose for him doing that? What is the purpose that you are in this place? What is the purpose why this is happening in your life? Whatever it is, you do hold the thoughts, the feelings and the purposes of his heart. God's heart. You carry God's heart inside of you. You know the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of His heart. That's why we call our ministry His Heart Ministries as well. Because I believe as believers, we must follow His heart. We must catch His heart. We must catch His purpose. We must catch His plan. Because it's His plan and His purpose 
that will bring us into the power and authority and spirituality that we have and we already have it we do hold the thoughts the feelings and purposes of his heart and i want to bless you with that this morning i'm just going to finish up here with that so this morning i want you to listen to this message again maybe i said a lot maybe it's simple to you but if you can grasp this and start building your life around this and start pursuing this it will change your life it will change the way you think it will change the way you hear the voice of god it will change the way you see things it will change the way you are acting and you are managing your life at this point so this morning i just want to give you an opportunity maybe You've listened to this and you say, Pastor Trevor, I need Jesus in my life. I realize that I've been walking the wrong way. I've been, maybe I've been spending my life in a wrong way right up till now. But now I realize that I need the Holy Spirit in my life. And I'm going to pray for you right now that God will flood your eye, heart, the eyes of your heart with understanding. So that His Spirit will come in you, that, that you will be filled with His Spirit and power. And that you will understand Him. So I'm going to pray for that right now. And if you are in a situation where you are struggling, maybe in a situation where you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go, you don't know who to listen to, you do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of God in your heart. You have the mind of Christ. If you draw from God and you draw from the Holy Spirit, He will guide you in His perfect will and plan. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, I just pray for every person this morning listening to this message. Father, I pray that you will open their hearts, open their minds. Father, help them that the eyes of their hearts will be flooded with light. So that they will see and understand your purposes, your plans. And Father, that they will come to a place where they will desire your purpose for their lives. Where they will build their, their plans around your plans, Father. Where their plans are not what they will follow, but your plans, Father. And that in everything they do, they will seek your plan and your purpose in that. And that will line up their lives into the direction it should go. And Father, I pray that you will give them clear direction. I pray that you will open their hearts, open their minds, open their spirits right now in Jesus' name. Father, they will realize and that they will move into that place of having the mind of God, the mind of Christ in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God. Amen. Right now, if you need Jesus in your life, maybe you've never given your life to the Lord and you are saying, Pastor Trevor, I need Jesus right now. I, ask, I want to ask him to come into my life. I want to give my life to him. Right now, I want to give you an opportunity. Maybe you've never done this before. Maybe you've done this before and you've backslidden and you just want to come back to God tonight. Maybe you're saying, hey, I have messed up my life. I want to tell you that he is gracious. He loves you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God and He wants you back because He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. I'm going to pray with you right now. Just pray after me. Pray this prayer after me and I'm going to lead you in a sinner's prayer. Give your life to the Lord this morning. Say, Father, pray it after me. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you, forgive me my sin. I repent this morning of my sins and right now I give you my life. I ask you Lord Jesus that you will come into my life, fill my life in Jesus name. For your word says all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I call on your name right now. Jesus save me, wash me, cleanse me. Heal me, restore me in Jesus' name. I accept you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus, you died on the cross. You gave your life. You rose on the third day. And you're alive, seated at the right hand of God. You are the Son of God. And you paid the price for my sins. I am now a child of God in Jesus name. Amen. If you prayed this prayer, I want you to go and find a church. Go and read the book of John. Just read through the book of John in the Bible. It's in the New Testament. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's the last one of the Gospels. The fourth book in the New Testament. Go and read the book of John. 
and and just let the word speak to you you know and 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 then from there on just read wherever you want to but go and read that and then find a church you need a body you need to find believers that will help you and encourage you in your life and the way that you you need to change your life and readapt in your life and you will find that in a church a bible believing church where they believe in uh, salvation they believe in baptism they believe in the baptism of the holy spirit speaking other tongues you need to find a church like that so they can teach you and train you and equip you for the work that god has for your life we love you this morning i just want to quickly take a few moments if there's anybody that's sick in their body right ever wherever you are if you're sick in your body no matter what the sickness might be i'm just going to pray for the sick right now I want you to lay your hands on that place where you feel that sickness or that pain or that uh, hurt or whatever it might be. Um, uh, right now, I'm just going to pray for you. Father, this morning I come to you in Jesus' name, Father, and I thank you that your word is true. I thank you that by your stripes we are healed. I thank you this morning that we shall lay our hands on the sick and they shall recover. Paul even had handkerchiefs on his body and when they handed it out to the people they were healed. Father, uh, uh, Jesus healed the centurion's son or, or the servant while he wasn't even there. So right now, online, you move over these, sign, uh, these waves, Father. And as they touch the screen or whatever, or touch that place in their body, Father, you connect with them. You touch them, you heal them. And you restore them right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for a miracle, a miracle happening. Every blood clot, Father, that is in that body right now, it breaks up, it dissolves, and it goes in Jesus' name. Father, right now, every sickness, every back pain, every uh, 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 vertebra, every uh, senior, whatever in that body, Father, in that back, it pulls right, right now, Father God. Father, every aphoritis and uh, 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 um, uh, bone problem, Father, you heal it right now. I don't know sicknesses because I'm not focused on sicknesses. I'm not the kind of person that gives sickness a name. Father, every hay fever, every lung condition, every heart condition, every uh, artery condition, Father, right now, you heal it in the name of Jesus. Father, I send someone with a, a leg that is paining, the, the, the right leg here near the cough, the cough. Father, right now I pray that you heal that leg in Jesus' name. Every knee problem, even elbow problems. I see elbow problems. Father, I thank you right now for healing people's elbows, Lord. Shoulder problems, Father, every area of their lives. In Jesus' name, you heal them. You heal them, Father God. I thank you for a miracle working power. Father, even cancer this morning. You heal them. You heal them. By your stripes, they are healed. By your blood, they are cleansed. They are saved. You exerted the very thing. Father, you made the effort to have your son die on that cross and raised him to life. And he took away the sins of the world. He healed the sickness. And Father, right now we have a right to be called children of God. We have a right to be healed. Father, you do not give sickness. You heal sickness. You do not bring sickness over people. You heal sickness in Jesus' name. Father, every sickness is not from you. I, I, I'm sensing there are people that not understand. You think God made you sick. God doesn't make you sick. I want to tell you, God doesn't make you sick. The, the, there are some sicknesses that will be for the glory of God, which the enemy has brought into the lives of people. But God will heal, heal those sicknesses to bring glory to His name. And this morning I sense that kind of anointing flowing where God is healing those sicknesses to bring glory to His name. Where you become a testimony of the miracles. I even sense someone sitting in a wheelchair right now. God is touching you. He wants you to rise up. Right now, strength is going into that back. Strength is returning into those legs. Right now, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for a creative miracle. I thank you for a supernatural miracle this morning. Healing them right now, touching them. I thank you for your power and your anointing present right now. Father, your word says, I, you send your word and you heal their diseases. 
Father, this morning I have sent your word. You have sent your son, which is your word, like John says, Father, that became flesh and he dwelt amongst us. We thank you that your word came and he showed us the world. Uh, as the world, he showed us who God is. He showed us your power. He manifested your power. And this morning I thank you for healing every sickness, every disease, eye problems, ear problems, right now in G even throat problems i sense people with throat problems right now healing 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 flowing right now into your body flooding from your top of your head to the tips of your toes of your feet right now it's just flowing it's just flowing and touching and healing your body in jesus mighty name jesus mighty name thank you father god and i sense our people that are interceding for someone else you are standing, Lord, my mother. I hear someone says, Lord, for my mother. And 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 and, and for children. You, you're praying for your children right now, Father. I pray that this healing anointing will flow even further through that person's minds and thoughts. Father, the person that are thinking of right now, that your spirit will move to that place. Touch that body, touch that life. Even people in a hospital being healed right now in Jesus name. I just see it's like a stream of the Holy Spirit just going into the lives of every house. And from there on it just goes further into the lives of everyone else that you are thinking for, interceding for right now. Lord, I thank you for your healing power. And we will hear about these miracles in Jesus. It's easy to do it over online. It's easy to just pray like this, Lord. But Father, we thank you that it's the truth, that you are our healer. You are our healer and that you move with your spirit. You don't need the hand of a man. We can lay hands, but Father, you can still do a work by just speaking a word. And we speak life over those bodies in Jesus name. Amen. This morning, I just want to quickly share. Um, maybe many of you are not in the church at this point and and, and I believe that maybe God is laying on your heart. It's the end of the month, you know. Maybe you don't know where to tithe, you know. And I want to give you an opportunity to tithe into our ministry, His Heart Ministries. We will have our banking details at the bottom of the screen. So you can just go there. And if you feel like you want to sow, but let me just read the scripture, Malachi chapter 3, about tithing. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not draw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. This is so powerful. The Bible says, he actually talks about you rob me. And with what? He says, then with tithes and offerings. And he says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. You know, and that is into the church, into the storehouse is actually where they, they gathered things to build the temple with. They gathered it in the storehouse to build the temple and for the temple to always have plenty and have enough. And I'm not saying today that a building is the temple or a building is a... But as the church, we are the body of Christ. We are His temple. And when you sow into a ministry, you sow into the body of Christ for the work of the ministry. Not for us as pastors to fly around and do all kinds of stuff and, and so on. You are sowing into the ministry to do the work of the ministry. And that's what we want to do. He says, bring your whole tithing to the storehouse that there may be food in my house. You know that there's enough in the house of God for us to do what God wants us to. For me as a pastor as well, I am working for myself at this point, but I also want to step into full-time ministry where I will be able to do the work of the Lord all the time. Do videos like this all the time. Do evangelism crusades all the time. So I can do the work of the Lord all the time. And I also need to be supported financially. You know, and, and uh, don't be like the people that says, Lord, you keep him humble and we'll keep him poor. That's how they thought in the old days. You know, Lord, you keep him humble, we'll keep him poor. And I'm not saying this morning I want to get rich on your money. But 
Listen to what the, the Bible says. He says, test me in this. Test me in this. This is the only place in the Bible where God says, test me. He says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. God says, test him in this. And I want to ask you this morning, if you don't have a place where you can tithe, think of us this morning. You'll see our bank details at the bottom. So into our ministry. We've got many things we want to do. We're still a small church and we're growing. And I believe that God's going to do something great. And test him in this and see if he will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so much that you cannot contain it. The Bible actually talks about, um, he says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines uh, in, in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. So he will keep the pest away from you. And all the nations will call you blessed. I want to be called blessed. And this morning, if you feel that you want to sow into our ministry, you're welcome. You see there, uh, online you can do that. And even if you belong to a church, remember to give your tithe this month. They need your tithe for them as a church to carry on, to do what they need to do. So we love you. We bless you. Enjoy your day. Father, And right now I pray for everyone as they decide in their heart to give, not on the compulsion or pressure. Lord, I pray that you will just bless them and pour out a blessing so much that they cannot contain it. In Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Enjoy your day. Bye.